So I'm about to use my TS-75, that is Festool's track saw, for the first time. And I need to uh, take a step before I make that cut, and that is trimming the splinter guard flush with the blade on the saw. It sticks out farther than the blade um, does, so you make that first pass, and then it's a zero clearance um, situation, basically supporting the cut the whole way through. There's no gap between the blade and that splinter guard that goes the full length of the rail. But there's two things I want to do before I even um, flush trim that uh, splinter guard, and that is one, adjusting these little green thumb screws to where there's no slop in between the base of the saw and the guide rail, and then also set the uh, positive stops, which are two machine screws in the front and back of the saw, to where the saw is cutting 90 degrees in reference to the base plate and the guide rail itself. So let's go ahead and take care of that. To adjust the slop out of the saw, you've got these two little green wheels right here, and I'll show you closer what they're actually doing. This is the groove that slides on the actual guide rail, and then in the front and the back of the saw are um, these little green wheels, and they are um, cam-shaped. Um, so when you turn those from above, it rotates uh, unevenly, I guess you can call it, and as you turn it, it pushes out on that guide rail and that's what takes out any sort of slop that you have between the base of the saw and the guide rail. So to get those adjusted, drop it back on the track. I have them loosened up all the way and then I'm just going to turn them the same. I'm going to turn them until they, uh, until they tighten up to about the same on the guide rail. So I've got no more slop but we're going to test it but it's a little tight now. So now I'm going to loosen them up just a little bit at a time until we get it sliding just right. There we go. Next I need to get the saw cutting 90 degrees and here's the indicator on the actual saw that shows the degree marks. You loosen up this thumb wheel and this thumb wheel and then you can make the adjustments the saw tilts away from me um, so you have a positive stop right here and right here so right now the saw is leaning too much towards the camera so what I need to do is tighten those up to get it to lean away and then afterwards you can adjust the little green indicator right there to uh, realign with the zero once you've got the saw set to 90 degrees so that's the next adjustment well, in fooling with my camera, I accidentally deleted the clip where I squared up my blade to the base, so I need to describe it in this clip. I'm not going to take it out of adjustment. It's already set to dead 90, and I need the saw in just a little while, and I don't have my square with me to get this reset. But in general, this is a very simple operation. You're going to use a Torx bit to make this adjustment, or a flathead screwdriver. Um, this is a size T20 bit. Um, so the two screws that you're going to be adjusting are ones right here and ones right there and you can see this one let me uh, do something real quick you can see the um, underneath that part of the base of the saw where it comes down and makes contact with the lower base that is how that screw is actually working it's making the saw either tilt this way or that way so the easiest thing to do I have found is to adjust the front screw first. Reason being is you cannot actually see where that one makes contact with the actual base of the saw. The one in the rear you can. So if you adjusted it with the one in the rear um, to actually make the adjustment, you wouldn't be 100% sure if you had the one in the back far enough down or maybe even too tight. So what, um, what I did is I made the adjustment with these little thumb screws loosened up. I made the adjustment tightening this down and that made it tilt away from the camera's position right now until I got it in 90 degrees. And to check it for its 90 degree position, I would make a small adjustment with the forward screw, tighten it down, flip the saw over, and plunge it out and check that with the square. And I just made small adjustments at a time until I got it all nice and square. Then what I would do is with those um, thumb screws still locked down, is come back and I would drop that screw down very carefully until it just makes contact with the base and then it's nice and firmly secured in position. Um, so that is all there is to that um, adjustment and if you have any questions just let me know. I apologize for not having the original demonstration um, here in the video. 
you need to set your depth stop to where it plunges uh, below your splinter guard, so I'm going to set this to uh, 7 millimeters, which looked like it would clear. When you make the cut that uh, flushes up the splinter guard, you're going to need it to be supported underneath. So what I did is I took the wooden strips that come inside the box with this guide rail, or you can just take any other piece of wood that you have and place it under there. And um, the other thing the direction said was to set the speed of the saw to six. And then what I'm going to do is plunge the saw out here and then do a full cut all the way down it. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Well, that wraps it up for today's video of getting that splinter guard all trimmed flush. Um, I think it worked out pretty good right at the very beginning and end of the track. It's not cut perfect because how far you have to slide the saw to cut it, but um, in the end you don't actually make cuts all the way to the end of the track anyway unless it's joined up. And so what I did is when I slid it, when I started, I pushed it towards the splinter guard some. And what it looks like is it looks like that splinter guard is cut angled out a little bit and then comes in and then goes dead straight the whole length. So um, say I join this up to my 75 inch guide rail later on, when I make that pass next time, it'll trim that end off perfectly straight, but I haven't cut in too far. Um, so the area in which you would actually be making a cut is still a perfectly straight reference that you could drop on a line or a mark that you have on, say if you're cutting a board, straight edging a board or cutting a piece of plywood, um, you can lay the edge of that splinter guard right on that mark. So that is pretty cool. So. Uh, I guess that pretty much wraps it up. After I've had this saw for a little bit, I'll come back and do a review on it. Um, and uh, then, you'll, of course, you'll see it popping up in uh, videos in the future. So, I guess that wraps things up. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And thanks again for joining me in another video. If you're not already a subscriber and would like to be, click the red button on the screen now and you'll get updates when I post future videos. And if you have any particular questions about this video or this tool, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you in an answer or include it in the next video featuring the saw. Thanks for watching.